Breaking news out of Norwalk first, Stephanie. A man is dead and three more people hurt after a violent incident on board a casino tour bus traveling on I-95 North. It happened just after 10 p.m. in Norwalk. A man on the bus attacked other passengers with a knife, a box cutter, some kind of cutting instrument, as they're calling it. This is a picture of the aftermath sent to us by a viewer. Police talked it all out in the early hours of the morning, and their telling of the story is compelling, to say the least. So we're going to take you now to the entire news conference to hear firsthand what happened. At about 10 p.m. this evening, State Police and Troop G in Bridgeport received several 911 calls from passengers aboard a tour bus that had left uh, New York, Chinatown, and was en route to a casino here in Connecticut. Uh, the report was that there was a disturbance on the bus and then in fact um, uh, they were in need of police assistance. That was broadcast to troopers on patrol in this area, but before troopers could respond to the bus, the bus pulled into this construction zone and got the attention of a trooper who was assigned to work the construction zone. The trooper went and approached the bus and as he was approaching the bus, the suspect and a civilian aboard the bus were engaged. Uh, in physical combat rolled off the bus onto the pavement of the highway. Uh, the suspect was armed with a cutting instrument and was inflicting harm towards the uh, witness and refused to disarm as ordered by the trooper. Uh, once the suspect realized that the trooper was uh, close by, the suspect began to advance towards the trooper with that cutting instrument. The trooper was forced to draw his service weapon, uh, fired on the suspect, striking the suspect. In addition, the trooper sus uh, did, in fact, uh, strike a witness with one of the rounds that deflected off the pavement. EMS responded to the scene with several ambulances, and the suspect, the witness, engaged in combat with the suspect, were provided emergency care at the scene and transported to the hospital. In addition, there were two passengers aboard the tour bus that were injured by the suspect uh, with that cutting instrument. Those passengers were also provided emergency care and transported to Norwalk Hospital. Uh, we have just recently been informed that the suspect has succumbed to his injuries at Norwalk Hospital. Uh, this scene has been secured. Uh, this is in the western portion of the State Police Geographic District. Uh, the, they have assigned the Central District Major Crime Squad, who has responded here to the scene, to conduct the investigation uh, into this State Police shooting. Uh, it's anticipated that the Interstate 95 will be closed at least all night and probably well into the commute in the morning uh, on the northbound side. Uh, the trooper was not injured, uh, but he has been taken uh, to Norwalk Hospital uh, uh, to be examined. Uh, a post-mortem examination will be conducted by the Office of the Chief State's Medical Examiner on the suspect to attempt to determine the exact manner and cause of death. Uh, at one point, the suspect it's reported uh, was inflicting harm to himself uh, with that cutting instrument on the bus um, after having engaged in, in some sort of uh, uh, disagreement with people aboard the bus. Uh, we are presently um, taking the witnesses from the bus. Uh, they're all going to be interviewed by state police detectives. Uh, we have major crime squad here that will uh, process the scene, gather physical and forensic evidence, and uh, document uh, all the facts and circumstances of this uh, incident. How many, How many people, people were stabbed? Uh, right now, we believe two aboard the bus, as well as the uh, uh, the witness who engaged a suspect uh, on the pavement outside the bus. Now, was that the same witness who happened to be shot as well by the state trooper? That's correct. Okay. How many people were on the bus? I believe it was 24, if I'm correctly. It was not a full bus, but uh, there was about 24, 25 people on that bus. And if you, uh, <laughs> uh, what can you clarify? Do you know they were going to Foxwoods, Mohegan, which casino? Do you know? I, I, that I didn't get. I don't know. I don't know. You mentioned disturbance on the bus leading to this fight. I mean, uh, did anybody describe how this person was behaving on the bus leading up to this? Well, understand that we're in the very infantile stages of this. We have a process that we need to go through uh, with search warrants. We'll interview all the witnesses. We'll get all the facts and circumstances from, you know, the 24, 25 people that were aboard the bus uh, to be able to answer those questions. How many people shot by the trooper? Uh, the suspect and one witness. How's the witness? The witness is fine. It's reported to be a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Do you know where that wound was, too? No. no. How, can you talk about how the bus was able to pull off into the construction site here? That seems like a pretty sort of dangerous thing that it did. It did, but it was an aggressive situation where people were being physically harmed aboard that bus. 
and the driver needed to get the attention of that trooper. When he came up on the state police car, he knew that there was a trooper at that location. He pulled the bus over to get help. How did he, can you expound on that? Explain, you know, explain exactly how he got his attention? I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to mislead you with information. I would rather get exact information from the investigators once they had a chance to interview all the people. It just suffice it to say that the driver did get the attention of the of the trooper, uh, caused the trooper to come and intervene. How long were they going on um, until they were able to pull over? How long was this not, altercation? Not, not an exorbitant amount of time. Uh, you know, the exact location when we received the first 911 call is to be determined, but uh, the bus driver did an extraordinary job locating help and getting help uh, to stop the aggression. Has the trooper's name been released, and what happens in terms of an investigation into what he did leading up to this shooting? The trooper's name will not be released. We will hold the trooper's name for at least 24 hours to allow him to notify his family that he's been involved in a serious situation. Uh, we'll release that tomorrow. Uh, as far as what his status will be, as is our departmental policy, he will be assigned administrative duties until the investigation is concluded. Do you know where the suspect who has succumbed to his injuries was shot? I do not. I do not. The medical examiner will provide that information for so, it. As you were explaining, it was a great, the other, uh, the guy who was outside was wounded, was a grazed wound, was it deflected from the... That's, that's what we understand, but again, that's, that's again to be determined when they do the trajectory as to uh, the angle of the shot as to whether it bounced off the pavement or, or hit the, uh, the, the witness directly. Just to clarify, are all men involved in this? Uh, no. No, one of, the, one of the victims aboard the bus was a female. Two people were stabbed on the bus. Correct. Yeah. The tale is told from the perspective of the state troopers about the violence on I-95 last night. News H. Brian Spiros is live in Norwalk. He'll have more on the story in just a moment, but for right now, we want to take it over to Teresa. Teresa, for a lot of people, the most important thing that he said right there was that I-95 North is going to be closed well into the morning commute, as he put it. What do you got? Uh, we have delays already starting, Jim. There's a big detour that's in effect. You're going to see uh, the situation as you travel down I-95. The highway is shut down between exits 13 and 14 on the Norwalk Darien line. Uh, we'll take you live outside to the pictures here. You're at a standstill. You're going to be forced off the highway onto Route 1 and then back onto the highway uh, closer to exit 15. So delays are about 30 minutes at this point back up just beyond exit 12. Cars are advised to use the Merritt Parkway northbound. Obviously, tractor trailers cannot hop on 15. You're going to have to take 684 to 84 if you are traveling in a tractor trailer into Connecticut. Uh, we know that there's a wrecker on the scene towing the bus away as we speak, so it might be an indicator that they could at least get one lane open, uh, but we will see and let you know as soon as that does happen. Check the cameras at WTNH.com. Jim, we'll send things back to you. Teresa, thank you. And of course, all this coming on the day that President Obama is coming to Bridgeport. So it's going to be a busy day on I-95 to say the least. We're going to check in with Gil in just a moment for how the weather is going to treat all of this. But first, we want to get to more about that trooper-involved shooting on the casino tour bus. News H Brian Spiros live for us in Norwalk. Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning, Jim. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, crew still here on the scene, although as Teresa had just mentioned, and I'm going to move out of the way, maybe difficult to see because of the chain link fence. But a short time ago, the bus was actually hooked up uh, to a wrecker and was pulled a short distance down the highway. And it looks like in the time we've been here, the major crimes and some of the police cars, they're actually starting to clear out. Uh, it's unclear when exactly the road is going to reopen the highway rather, uh, but uh, things are starting to clear, which is certainly a good sign. Now, this was a frightening ordeal for some 25 people who were traveling on that tour bus between New York City and one of the Connecticut casinos. And this morning, as we had mentioned a short time ago, one man is dead and three others were sent to the hospital after being stabbed. Now, here's what we know so far. Around 10 last night, the bus was traveling north along I-95 through Norwalk. State police say they started getting 911 calls from people on that bus reporting some sort of disturbance. We know that a man on board the bus was causing injury to himself and other people with some sort of cutting in Instrument. Police aren't saying what kind of weapon the man man had on him. Now, before state police could respond to the calls, the driver of the bus actually pulled into a construction zone between exits 13 and 14 right along I-95. He then got the attention of a state trooper who was working at the construction site. Now, as this was happening, a physical altercation between the suspect and another man on the bus spilled out onto the highway. Police tell News 8 that the suspect was causing injury to the passenger 
passenger with that cutting instrument. The trooper ordered the suspect to drop the weapon, and that's when things quickly escalated. The trooper opened fire, shooting the suspect. A bullet also reflected off the ground, hitting the passenger who was outside the bus. Now, four people were taken to the hospital. The suspect later pronounced dead. As for the man who was stabbed and grazed by the bullet, his injuries are said to be non life threatening. A man and woman who were stabbed on the bus are also expected to be OK. Now, as you can imagine, this matter is still under investigation. Again, as we had showed you at the beginning of the live shot here, they are slowly starting to clear the northbound lane here in Norwalk along I-95, but it's unclear when officially they will give the green light for traffic to move in that direction. Of course, we will keep you updated and you can stay tuned to Good Morning Connecticut for Teresa's updates on the traffic. That is the very latest. We are reporting live this morning from Norwalk. Brian Spiros, News 8.